Hi, welcome to our show. I'm your host, Omar Bourne. On our last show, we introduced you to New York City Emergency Management and the role the agency plays in helping New Yorkers prepare for emergencies. Today, we're going to look at emergency preparedness for kids. Back with us is Katie James, Outreach Coordinator for New York City Emergency Management. Katie, welcome. Thanks for having me, Omar. Thank you for being here. Now, on our last show, you talked to us about the Ready New York program, which is basically an emergency preparedness program for adults. Today, we're going to look at the Ready New York Kids program. Yes. So Ready New York has an outreach plan that we do for kids, and this is the way in which we educate all the different students throughout New York City about how to be prepared for an emergency. So we have five distinct platforms which we use. We go to outreach to preschoolers, elementary school, middle school, high school, and even college students. And this is the way that we teach kids the different needs that they have and the different way that they can create plans to be safe for emergencies. Wonderful. Uh, can you tell us a little about the, uh, the elementary school program? Sure. So the elementary school was actually our first program that we did when we launched this back in 2007. Um, so we go through schools, mostly through presentations, although we do smaller classroom workshops. And we give them this book, which is called Let's Get Ready New York. Okay. And it has different games and poems, and it teaches kids all the important aspect of having a plan. Okay, wonderful. And I see you also have something else here. And this, this yep. is another book that you have that so you present? This is our coloring book that we give out to preschoolers. So it has a copy of our cartoon DVD. And it also has a coloring book with matching games, pages to write on that teaches kids, again, the different plans about being prepared. So you're talking about elementary school and preschoolers. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm thinking this is K through 5, which is yep. about 5 years old. So basically, you're never too young to start preparing for emergencies. No, nope, not at all. Wonderful. Um, what else do we have here? So we also have our most recent outreach, which is for middle schoolers. So we have our tween outreach. So this is our tween guide. Uh, they're topical, so they go through the seasons. Right now we're talking about heat, and we're also talking about hurricanes, as it is hurricane season. And in this guide, we talk about personal responsibility. So when kids are in middle school, they're getting a little bit older. Maybe they can start doing things on their own. So we really want to focus about how being prepared is part of your responsibility. We also have materials for families and for teachers over here. So we have a yearly guide. So each month we have a different emergency that we talk about and we teach students and teachers and families how to be prepared for them. Now, during your presentations, you told me earlier that there are five main steps uh, in this communications, in this preparedness plan. Mm -hmm. Can you walk me through those five steps that you want kids to know? Absolutely. So the first step is having a communication plan. So talking with your kids about what an emergency is and that you're creating an emergency plan. The second thing is having important phone numbers. So that's something that we encourage through our Ready New York emergency reference card that we give to every student when we visit them. And here we want kids to think about the important phone numbers that they would need. So they'll sit down with their families and t go over parents' phone numbers, babysitter phone numbers, a neighbor's phone number, and even the phone number of their school. So we want to make sure that they have those numbers with them at all times. And on, on this reference card, mm -hmm. uh, we also have, looks like we have a spot here for their name and their mm -hmm. date of birth as well, yep. and even a doctor's phone number. Yes, so doctor's offices have a lot of information about kids in case something's happening with medical emergency. If someone has this emergency reference card in their go back, they can know which doctor they go to to call them to get that information. Okay. What else is a part of uh, this plan? So the third step is having meeting places. So as we talk about with adults having meeting places with your family, having an out-of-state contact, it's also important to have meeting places with your kids. So we prefer each kid have two meeting places with their family, one near their home. So mm -hmm. in case there's an emergency within the home, within the apartment building, they can go somewhere close and one a little bit further away in case there's an emergency in the perimeter or in the block of the area. We also suggest when parents go through this plan with their kids that they pick a meeting place that the child's familiar with, okay. some place that they've gone to with them, and also a place that's safe to get to, so not crossing any major roads or not having to take any public transportation. And I like the idea of a meeting place. Uh, for kids at school, they have fire drills. And yes. with these fire drills, there is a meeting place set up for them where they go and, and the teachers will then you know, check off who's mm -hmm. there. Um, and so I don't know if parents understand how important it is to have that same plan for kids at home. Right, right, and that's why we try to encourage it within students during our presentation that make an emergency plan, including meeting places with your family, so it kind of creates that discussion and, and starts that conversation so they can create one. That, that's a good, important step. Yeah. Now, you also have 
a, a DVD or a video yes. that tells us a little bit about these men in places? Yes, so we have one. It's called Emergency Experts. Okay, let's take a look. One day, at circus school in New York City, Rex the dino, Isabella and Jack the two-headed person, Harry and Rachel the two-headed dragon were practicing their flips when something unexpected happened. Isabella, I love working on flips. Yeah, I love practicing our flips too. Watch me, watch me. Wow, you do really great flips, Rachel. But do you have to use the chalks that I'm allergic to? What happens when you smell chalk? I, 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 chew. Oh no, I sneeze and fire shoots out. What do we do now? The building's on fire. We should put the fire alarm. Meet me at the meeting place, that's where it's safe. Meet me at the meeting place, that's where it's safe. Wait, where do we want to go? What was that song about? We need to take his hand to make sure everyone is here. I'm here. Here, me too. Rex, check. Isabella and Jack, check and check. Rachel? Rachel? Oh no, Rachel is missing. Oh no, where do I go? What should we do? Look, here, here comes, comes help. help. Is everyone here at the meeting place? Or is someone still inside? No, Rachel the two-headed dragon is missing, and her phone is not working. Okay, you gotta stay here. I'll put on my special equipment and go look for her. I'll put out the fire. Oh, I hope she's okay. I didn't mean to start the fire. <coughs> Are you alright? I'm alright thanks to Tiger, but I didn't know where to go. It's important that everyone knows where the meeting place is and how to get there, even two-headed dragons. Now I know how important the meeting place is. Everyone did a great job by pulling the fire alarm, meeting at the meeting place, and taking attendance to find out who is missing. Hey Jack, maybe we should call Mom and let her know that we are okay. That's a great idea, Isabella. That's another great point, gang. After an emergency, you should call your emergency contact and let them know you're okay. Right, Clifford the fire truck. And you should have this number memorized or have it written down and always carry it with you. Can we just keep the emergency contact in our cell phones? Remember when you were stuck inside and your phone wasn't working, Rachel? Everyone, what have you learned today? Everyone was saved from the fire and the gang learned an important lesson about the meeting place. The meeting place is a great way to get everyone together safely and figure out if anyone's missing. Talk to your parents or guardians about where you should meet during an emergency. The end. Meet me at the meeting place, that's where it's safe. Meet me at the meeting place, that's where it's safe. Do the rocks find your way, that's where we'll meet. Meet me at the meeting place, that's where we'll meet. That's why. So, Omar, we do have a special guest with us today. She is an emergency preparedness rock star, and her name is Annabelle. Hi, Annabelle. Welcome to the show. How are you? Good. Good. So, are you going to show us uh, what's in your go bag today? Yeah. Awesome. Let's take a look. And now, Katie, on the last show, you talked about a go bag for adults. Mm -hmm. So, this is what kids now should have in their go bags, I correct? Absolutely. I have a blanket to keep me warm. Awesome. And I have my favorite snacks Fiber Food and a lemon bar. Ooh, okay. very nice. And I have some arts and crafts. I what kind of arts and crafts do you have? Coloring pencils oh. and lanyard. These are nice. Lanyard's a lot of fun. I used to do that when I was a little kid. And then I have an extra pair of clothes. Very nice. 
And are these things that you put together with your family? Yeah. And then I have one last thing, a stuffed animal. And what's his name? Ice Cube. <laughs> That's pretty cute. That's awesome. Do you take him everywhere? Yeah. That's great. So having something like this, we like to call it a comfort item. Okay. So these are things that we encourage people to pack in their go bags for their kids because it makes them feel comfortable, it makes them feel safe, because in an emergency it might not be an ideal situation. If a kid has an item, maybe it's a stuffed animal, maybe it's a blanket that makes them feel safe and at home, we encourage people to pack that in their go bags. And tell me about the important documents that you should also have in your go bag for your kids. So for kids, they should definitely have their emergency reference card okay. in their backpack, which has their important phone numbers of their family, of their babysitter, of their neighbor. Also having their emergency plan in the backpack is a great idea and any important documentations. Okay, Annabelle, so what's your favorite item uh, out of everything that you have here in your go bag? I like Ice Cube. <laughs> I'm a fan <laughs> of Ice Cube. What's your favorite item? Ice Cube. Ice Cube. Yeah. <laughs> and so Katie, the uh, arts and craft and the colored pencils, these people may not understand why these are important, but uh, when you have your go bag and you have to go somewhere, you want to mm -hmm. be able to uh, keep your kids entertained, so to speak. Right, right. And these are great uh, ideas, especially what Annabelle brought, because they're things you can do without internet connection. You don't need to have a Wi-Fi password, and you can do things on the road. You can do them while in a shelter. Um, you can do them pretty much anywhere, okay. and they um, are a lot of fun. And and you can make a cool bracelet, right? <laughs> <laughs> so Katie, uh, Annabelle did a, a spectacular job of showing us what a go bag for kids should look like. And in addition to go bags, there are also stay at home kits, and you mentioned this earlier, uh, supplies that you should have uh, if you need to shelter in place. Absolutely. So these are definitely important for every New Yorker to have because you never know when there's going to be an emergency where you have to stay at home. So as I mentioned in the winter, we're mo we know them more, most likely because if there's a blizzard, no one goes outside. Right. But also in the summer, if there's hurricanes where it's not safe to go outside, even if you're not told to evacuate, you want to make sure you have enough items in your home to last you for several days. Right. So as I mentioned, a gallon of water per person per day that could be used for showering, for cooking, for brushing your teeth, for washing your hands, to having canned food, also a can opener that works is important, and having extra flashlights and batteries in case the power goes out, stockpiles of medication, which okay. is important for everyone in your family, and also having games and entertainment to do in case there's no internet, in case there's no electricity. So having board games, having puzzles, having arts and crafts, these are all examples of things you can create little stay-at-home kits for your ch kids to make sure that they are entertained and having fun during an emergency. And you also told me earlier that there is a, a Ready New York uh, school uh, for kids program yes. and uh, at the end of the year there's actually a school each year that receives the award. Yes. How can parents at home find out about this? Sure, so what we do is on our website, nyc.gov slash readynewyork, we have a link that schools can actually apply to become the Ready School of the Year. So if they do different programs within the school, if they teach kids about emergency preparedness, if they have us visit to do a presentation, we really want to see the schools that take initiative to bring preparedness into their community. So which are the schools that go above and beyond general expectations to bring this throughout their community. And this year we had Myra S. Barnes, the intermediate school right here right in here Staten, Staten Island, Island. Yeah. and um, they did an awesome campaign, their middle school, where they educated their friends about how to be safe on the internet okay. and how to use the internet to be safe during an emergency. So they talked about our apps that we have, Notify NYC, and the different ways that they can use that to relay information during an emergency, which was really clever and creative. So we visited their school, our commissioner came to speak, and we also had one of our emergency vehicles that we brought to the scene uh, so the kids can see what it's like to be out in the field during the emergency. And you mentioned Notify NYC, and this is actually a cool app for kids and for mm -hmm. parents where you can sign up, you can go to the website, you can sign up, and then you receive emergency alerts? Yep, absolutely. So for kids, you have to be 16 or over to get the alerts okay. unless you have parents' permission. Right. Um, but if you're not, then you can um, sign up to receive things where you go to school, where you work. It's also a great idea for parents to have notify messages for their children's school. Because for example, if there's a school relocation, if something's happening at a school, they'll get the instant mes message right away. They'll know what the plan is. So they'll have that idea. So it's not waiting for a phone call, it's not waiting for an email, it's that they'll get that notification Straight instantly. To your phone. Yeah. Straight
straight to your phone. That is wonderful. Mm -hmm. Now, New York City Emergency Management is bringing the show on the road, and you yes. guys are going to be here in Staten Island in September for National Preparedness Month? Yes, so National Preparedness Month is a huge month that we do different events throughout the city, and on September 26th, we'll be at the Staten Island Children's Museum from 12 to 5. We'll have other agency partners present, and we'll do crafts, we'll have games for the kids, we'll have presentations. Um, so it'll be a great day, so I encourage all families in Staten Island to come out and enjoy the museum for free. Wonderful. Uh, and in addition to National Preparedness Month, this is also, we're in what we call coastal storm season or mm -hmm. hurricane season. Mm -hmm. So how can kids prepare uh, for hurricane season uh, throughout the next few months? Great. Well, they can have a go bag, so yeah. they can work with their families to create a go bag for everyone in their family, and they can review these important steps. So they can create a communication plan, they can have their meeting places, have important phone numbers written down, and also gathering a stay-at-home kit, which I think kids have a lot of fun doing. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, Katie, thank you very much for being on the show today. and. It is important not only for parents, mm -hmm. but for kids to have an emergency plan. Absolutely. And we thank the New York City Emergency Management for having uh, these measures in place where we can educate parents, we can educate kids, we can educate mm -hmm. New Yorkers about how to stay safe, how to stay prepared uh, before an emergency. So thank you very much for being here. Thanks for having us. And also if parents are interested and teachers are interested in having us come visit their school, they can request a presentation on our website, nyc.gov slash readynewyork. You click request an event and we'll come out there and we'll visit your school, we'll talk to your kids, and each student always gets a copy of a guide and a letter that we bring home to the parents that gives them an explanation of what we talked about for the day. Online there's also some games for the kids so they can learn how to be more prepared. There's crossword puzzles um, and also resources for parents. Wonderful. Thank you very much Katie. Thanks for uh, having me. For being on the show today and emergency preparedness is important not only for parents but also for kids and we want to thank the New York City Emergency Management for having that plan in place uh, for kids to be educated and prepared before emergencies. We want to thank you guys for joining us today and we look forward to being with you on our next show. Uh, stay safe New York. Thank you very much for having us. Hey Sally, could you please turn on EET? There is a show I want to watch. I guess. I'm not really watching anything right now, anyway. Sorry for this interruption from EET, but this is an important emergency announcement. Hurricane Denny is approaching New York City. If we lose power, tune into your radio for updates. You may also want to gather some supplies in case we have to evacuate. Whoa, Whoa this, this sounds, sounds serious. serious. Let's, Let's go, go to the Ready Mart and, and get, get some, some supplies, supplies before, before the storm, storm hits. hits. No way. I'm supposed to go to the beach. Besides, getting supplies, it sounds lame. Are you sure? This storm sounds pretty serious. Yes, it's important to be prepared. That's why we dinos went extinct. We just weren't prepared. Well, my tan is pretty important too. Come on, Dino. Let's get supplies. Look, I found a radio, just like the vampire recommended. Great. Bring it along. Hey, guys. Welcome to the Ready Mart. What can I do for you? The news said a hurricane was coming. We're here to get some supplies. Good idea. It's always better to be prepared. Try aisle three. There are some snacks that don't need to be cooked or refrigerated. Yum. Snacks. Water. Flashlight. Snack. Playing cards. cards? It looks like it's getting pretty bad out there. What else did the news say? They said to listen to the radio for updates. How about it, radio? Any updates on the storm? I don't know. My batteries are too low. Mr. Octopus, do you have any batteries? Here you go. And here are some extras in case those run out. Gee, thanks. 
Hurricane Denny is hitting New York City. The city has open shelters. Everyone who lives by the water should go to the closest shelter. We live by the water. Me too. Let's all go to the shelter together. I better bring some supplies too, in case we have to stay a while. You guys already have a radio, a flashlight, and some water. But I might also need my ID, an extra pair of glasses, my asthma inhaler and medication, my favorite book, an extra set of keys, a snack. Wow, that was fast. Yeah, well it helps having eight arms. Where is everybody? My friends are supposed to be here. Uh-oh, the hurricane is coming. And my phone stopped working. Somebody help! Steve! Dino! Somebody help me! I'll save you. Why aren't you with everyone else in the shelter? I didn't know there was a shelter. I wish I listened to the vampire. Sis, you made it. I was worrying about you being out in Hurricane Denny. I'm sorry, Steve. I should have listened to you. I was scared and all alone, and my phone didn't work. Good thing Alien was around to save you. But you might not be so lucky next time. <laughs> Hurricane Denny has passed. The danger is over. Everyone can go home. Yeah. yeah! Everything worked out for Steve, Sally, and Dino, thanks to Mr. Octopus, radio, and a helpful alien. But it's important to gather emergency supplies ahead of time. Mr. Octopus's Ready Mart could run out of supplies or be closed when the storm arrives. Gather your emergency supplies today so you'll have them ready when you need them. Be a ready New Yorker. Be prepared. The end. Go, go back. Dappled sunlight through trees and a wisteria-covered front porch. No two days are alike. An older woman sorts her medication. So every day, you prepare. A woman who is blind feeds her service dog. For yourself? She places the bowl on the floor and he eats. For those you love? A mother using a wheelchair packs a lunchbox. Her daughter takes it, kisses her, and runs off. For whatever the day may bring. A man who is deaf signs to a loved one and departs. Being prepared is a part of who you are. But in the case of a disaster, preparation isn't always front of mind. In an emergency when help and resources may not be available for days, being prepared is more important than ever. It's up to everyone to be informed about what types of emergencies might occur where you live or visit. Knowing the best responses for your personal circumstances is the key to maintaining your health, safety, and independence. Make a plan that covers where you'll go in an emergency and how a personal support network can assist you. Build a kit that contains the specific things you need to survive for several days. Food and water, medication and supplies, the older woman assembles her kit. As well as any important documents you may need. She includes a USB drive. Being prepared is a part of who you are, and disaster preparation is no different. The man who is deaf stores his kit in the closet. There's no one more capable of planning for your situation than you. The mother using a wheelchair closes her kit and hugs her daughter. Words on screen. Be informed, make a plan, build a kit. Get involved. Ready.gov slash my plan.